Thank you for having me. I'm going to be taking you all through how I use micro learning um, in my environment. Um, but before I do that, I'm going to bore you just a little bit about myself. Um, so you already know that I live in Redding, California. Um, if you look at this picture, this is where I live. That's the Sacramento River. That little white thing is the Sundial Bridge. So if you Google the Sundial Bridge, it's about 217 feet tall. It is a sundial. It's placed accurately. It's a landmark in Redding. So we actually have a landmark here in Reading. I'm originally from the Bay Area, mostly Santa Clara. And uh, before that, I'm from England, but I'm not going to jump into that story yet. So, <laughs> all right. So next here, I've got an OTR husband. For those of you that know what that acronym stands for, um, maybe you'll get some points. Um, I have three adult kids. I've got two grandkids. I don't know about you guys, but it's really hard for me to find a picture where we're all together. And that picture is really old. My oldest granddaughter just turned 14 and she's going to high school. So um, that's a little bit of an old picture there. Um, so Christopher's got a lot of something and I've got a lot of something too. I have five cats. Um, those are our youngest babies of the house. And for those of you that love cats, I'm going to tell you their names. And for those of you that don't like cats, I am so sorry. I am going to tell you their names. So going from the left to the right. So we've got oldest to youngest. I've got Kiki, Calypso, Indy. Cleo is the one that's belly up. And I've noticed in my camera roll, she's always looking like that. And then the last one there is Ryder. So those are the five cats in the house. I am working at Cisco Systems. I work for one of the best teams. I have such a supportive unit. I am on the learning and enablement team here. And I've worked virtually for about 22 years. So when the pandemic hit, I was like, oh yeah, this is no problem. I, this is what I'm used to doing. Um, I have delivered live virtual learning for about 20 years. All right, so for those of you that might have guessed over the road for OTR, this is my husband's office. It goes all around the country. And a fun fact, my youngest cat named Ryder is actually a passenger of this truck. And this cat, she lives with me now. She's actually under my desk, um, but she has been to more states than me and maybe more states than any of us here. All right, so before I start losing my time going on about myself and boring everybody, I am going to get to the good stuff. I am super excited to talk to you about micro learning. So with the time I have, I'm going to share with you my experience with it. Um, and my experience with micro learning was new. Um, and I, I won't say that the term micro learning was new to me. I knew about micro learning, but for me, to put my content into a micro learning format, that was totally new. So you're actually getting this from me the first time I've used it. So come to me in about a year, if I come back to one of these, maybe my content will even be better. So this is what I did for the first time. So what I wanna go ahead and do is really take you through the why we turn to micro learning for our enablement program. I wanna take you through a bit of my strategy and then I just have some final thoughts, some best practices as I close. So let's go with the why. So why micro learning? And sometimes it's pretty obvious, but also it may not be obvious, but my audience was really busy. So I was designing content for busy people. This was internal facing content for our customer success organization. Um, I also had a lot to cover. And I didn't want to take months of my time to get the content out there. So this might have been a good option for us. And if you're wondering, there's nothing on the slide yet. I promise it's coming. Um, we also wanted to make most of this asynchronous. We were doing monthly live sessions and we had a pretty good turnout, but people knew it was recorded. So maybe they're going to be catching the recording. And sometimes when you're moving to micro learning or maybe asynchronous um, content, you might worry about live Q&A, but there's always a way to do that. So for us, we said hello to micro learning. It was important for me to have bite-sized content. 
Um, so here you actually see a little picture of my program. It has about nine little pieces there that I'm gonna delve into in a little bit more detail in just a moment. The other thing that was important for me is blending it. So if you're you know, facilitators, trainers, learners, uh, we like to blend things up. We like to change the way that we deliver our content to you. So it was really important for me that I had a lot of flexibility with the tool or the tools that I was using because I, I don't always use one thing to deliver my content. Speaking for all of us facilitators and trainers, we love it to be interactive. It doesn't matter if you're doing something live. It doesn't matter if you're doing something virtual. If you're putting it all into micro learning, making it interactive is important. I wanted to have my learners, my viewers do something, answer something, and have a way to ask things if they needed to. And then, of course, the last thing that we always want is we want to have metrics. We want to have something to measure. Um, it's always important to feed metrics back up, but sometimes we need that for our own gratification. Is this, you know, a tool that's working? And for me, I knew about how many people were looking at or going to get the content, but I wanted to find out how many people actually watched that content. So that was important for me as well. Um, so that's really what led us to micro learning, people being busy, but being able to create things um, in a different format, which was bite size. So then there's my strategy. And you know, for those of you that are a pro at this, I know I'm gonna, I'm only gonna get better. I am a learner, but I had a lot of fun with it. So here's what I did. The first thing I needed to do is I needed to break down my content. You can put everything into one lesson. You can put everything into one course. Uh, but what's great about micro learning is you can make it smaller. So I needed to figure out out of all of this content, how long did I have to do it? And how was I going to break it down? And obviously micro learning is a really great way of being able to do that. So I had about eight modules, nine if you include the little introduction I created in seven taps um, to introduce the program that was ahead of us. The other thing I did when it came to delivering the content once it was done was reserving participation time in people's calendar. Now, of course, for me, we had an internal audience and there may be a lot of you here that have internal audiences as well. Um, I had a distribution list. I took that distribution list and I invited everybody to a calendar appointment about three weeks out before the content was, you know, I was probably working on it. I was in the middle of preparing it, but giving them three weeks notice, setting aside, uh, aside at least 30 minutes, um, even though my modules weren't that long, to have that time to be able to view the content. Now, what I did is I put little hints about what was coming. And the night before the actual calendar meeting, I dropped in my seven taps link. So we have a global audience. So those that were online got to see it right away. Maybe some people got to see it the next morning, um, but they all had that reserved time to be able to watch the content. It also made it easy for them to go back like, hey, last week there was something that the enablement team put in my calendar. So they were able to go back and look at those modules whenever. I tried to keep it to a pattern as well. So about the third week of the month is typically when that content showed up. All right. Blending the learning. I've mentioned this already. Now I did convert my PowerPoint slides to PDF. So that image that you see on the left is actually a blender and it's moving and it's mixing things up because that's what I like to do. I like to mix things up a little bit. So I did use seven taps as my go to for my micro learning vehicle. I um, loved it. I love being able to put whatever content I needed to with the cards. It had different tools that allowed me to um, use different pictures. I could put in surveys, I could put in my own content, but I also had some things as a trainer that I needed to elaborate on. Does anyone here as a trainer ever feel like they need a little bit more real estate, a little bit more space? I need to talk a lot about something. I really need to send the message home on this one thing. Well, I'm a Cisco Systems and we have access to the WebEx suite. And one of the things that we have in the WebEx suite is a product called Vidcast. 
And VidCast is just a tool that allows you to record only up to about 15 minutes a video. You can have your own camera showing, you can share your screen. So what I did to mix it up a little bit is I created a VidCast. But what I did is I placed that in my seven tap cards. So really seven taps was my house and all of my individual cards were the different rooms. And in these different rooms, I had different types of content. Um, some of it came with seven taps, which was awesome, but some of it you're able to blend in your own stuff as well. So I went ahead and put in those videos, very short videos. The other thing that I needed to add to my content was handouts. Um, I created these nice PDF documents. We use SharePoint as our document repository. So created a folder in SharePoint, went back to my seven taps card, uh, created a link. So that way they've watched the module and you're gonna see a picture of this in a moment. I have a little sample of one of my modules that I did. So that way you can put a little visual to how I'm describing it here. Um, so they were able to get to their resources on SharePoint. Um, continuing with the blend, we still wanted to offer some sort of live session um, because our global audience, our customers still wanted to see some of our content. So we were following the same theme, um, but we had live sessions, but we took that registration link, we put it in the micro learning module. So that way all of our internal customers could go and register for the session. And then we used other avenues to market um, our live sessions. What we're excited for in the future is using seven taps externally as well. So I'm really looking forward to that. So that's what I mean by blending the learning, just different things that I'm doing. And maybe I'm using some different uh, tools to, to um, deliver my content. Uh, I always like to recap. So once I had delivered these modules, we had our live session. Um, we always provided some sort of recap, reminded everybody, here's the links, here's the recording. Um, in seven taps, there's a way of creating a shared folder. And that's where I just kept putting my modules as I finished them. And everybody had the link to that shared folder. So if they wanted to go see the two modules uh, released that month, they could see it. They could also see anything prior to that as well. And then of course, checking the metrics. I was always like, how many people have been watching this? What are the answers I'm getting? Because it's not just the different tools that I used um, that we have in house. It's also some of the tools that Seven Taps has to offer as well. Um, so this is my little picture format of what I've just, just described to you. So we've got our title. What I love about Seven Taps is adding gifts. Like I love communicating through gifts. It's just a way of showing a feeling when you can't quite do it in some words, right? That's how a lot of us communicate. Um, so here, third card over is where after we just got started, they're going to click on that button. They're going to watch that vidcast video. Fourth card over after the video, they've got some quiz questions. I could have asked, added multiple cards in there for more questions, but I just put one. Then I had more of an open-ended answer, opinionated type of question I slipped in there. There was the registering for the live session. And by the way, once the live session took place, then I went back to the seven taps module and just replaced the register link with the record link because I want people to go back and look at some of those previous sessions. So, so easy just to go in and change the wording a little bit and put a recording in there. Um, second card from the end there is where all of our resources were. So here's your handouts. This is all everything that we have to support what we've covered, whether it's PDF PowerPoints, um, but everything was um, contained within this one set of cards. So about eight of them. So that's what I did. That is my maiden voyage. Again, some of you might be pros at doing this. You might have some great ideas for me, which I'm always open to. Um, but uh, I'm really here just to make sure everyone knows that it's easy to do and it's fun to do. My final thoughts, if you get stuck on something, you've got AI in there. I used it all the time just to get me started, but I can curate it. I can take out things. I can tweak it. You could turn a whole presentation into a set of cards, which is great. Start small, maybe your longer session, you could do some micro learning at the beginning of it. Take some of the end stuff, micro learning at the end, use cases, best practices. 
I try to be funny. I try. I think Christopher's better at being funny than I than I am. And always make sure to survey your audience. What worked? What can we do better next time? Always important to do that. All right. Thanks, everybody. My my signal has arrived. My cane. Claire, is hey, next. no, you know what? Look at that. You were you were right on the spot. I was gonna say Johnny on the spot, but then I'm like, well, no. But then I, I figured you Jane on the spot doesn't work either. Yeah. So Clary, Clary on the spot. It's cool. Clary on the spot. There you go. I we just came up with a new phrase. No, I like that. I what what I kept as I was listening to you go through this, I just keep having remix like running through my earbuds as I as I was thinking about this. Not that it was actually there, but I yeah, that's right. <laughs> because I really like how you highlighted the fact that a lot of times I talk to people and they're like, what is that one tool that I can do that's going to to land it all? And, and honestly, I've played with pretty much every tool on the planet and they, mm -hmm. it doesn't exist. And the reality mm -hmm. is it's really about how you mix things together really well. And I think you did a mm -hmm. great job doing that. Awesome. Yeah. I, 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 I like that flexibility. I do like to be able to bring other things in and clearly I talk a lot. So when it comes to developing a recorded presentation, but keeping it short, just slipping that in there when I need it a little bit more. Yeah, yeah. Because I talk a lot. So, what? Well, <laughs> well you, you know what? So do I. So that's fine. But I think the beauty is you're allowing people, and again, it's about empowering people to have some autonomy of choice in some of that stuff and recognize, mm -hmm. you know what? Here's an element of this. Here's an element of this. But rather than clockwork orange you through the whole thing, right. we can actually give you the flexibility to say, hey, here's all these different resources, but we've managed mm -hmm. to curate them and pull them together into a single experience. Right. And keeping it small. I mean, I could have done this in one shot. Like I could have taken a couple of months, you know, hit the paint, really just did one module, but really keeping it short. That way they know they don't need a lot of time to get through the content either. And if your content is large, break it up, do the same thing. Okay. So out of curiosity, I am curious on this one for you. As you look at that, and now I have our beatboxing remix in the background, just <laughs> continuing <laughs> on repeat. Yeah, we're looping it, right? That's that's where we're going next. Um, is from the maintenance of the, uh, careful, I'll start dubstepping like in the right, background no. or something like that. I'll do the running um, man right now behind this chair. <laughs> I'll swing it out of the way. We got it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, is from a maintenance standpoint, how do you manage some of that stuff? Because I think that is one of the challenges that you have to keep in mind as you start pulling resources from different places and linking out mm -hmm. to other things is you can run into that. So how do you balance that? Well, right now in my micro learning journey, I'm going to have to say I'm lucky because this was my first round of content that I did. Um, but you okay. do bring up a good point and you're making me think, hmm, I am going to have to do that. <laughs> so, I mean, obviously what I try to do is use a lot of pictures and not a lot of words. We also okay. try to use a little less screenshots in case things are going to change with user interface. Um, but it may be important to go through your own content on a systematic basis, whether it be quarterly. Um, but I do have an overall spreadsheet of everything I did create and what I put in it. Um, okay. And that's going to allow me to add a new feature if I need to go ahead and add a new feature or remove something that might be getting um, outdated. So first of all, and thank you so much for going through this. As we're wrapping this up, can we get a round of emojis for Claire? I thought that was absolutely fantastic. And you know what? Even though I'm not a cat person myself, mad respect. I would give you knuckles, at, you know, fist bump for the fact that you're just owning it, right? That's the thing. Just own it. Is <laughs> what you said, the fact you document and keep a spreadsheet of that stuff, Kudos to you for doing that, because I can just say as a senior learning leader, one of the challenges that I'll run into is when you have those things where you go, I don't even know what we have and where those opportunities are, where there's a oh, change. Oh, no, we've goal. gone through that. We've got to try and figure out where that is. And some of that operational efficiency is so critical in terms of, of running mm -hmm. this stuff well. So thank you for calling that out and, and for doing that, because that's something that a lot of folks don't do. So Oh, yeah. And, you know, you. we had to do it on our other. We have our learning platform, golearn.webex.com, and we have tons of content out there for internal 
this golf balls, we have our partners, customers, and we had to do a little bit of a, you know, uh, tracking and you just always got to keep on what's out there. Okay. I mean, it's not yeah. the fun stuff. It's not the fun, creative stuff, but it's the really, really important stuff. All yeah. right. Well, Claire, you hang out backstage and just chill through the rest of this. We'll bring you back up at the end. Thank you so much for okay. your presentation. One more round of emojis for Claire. 